In this video, I'm going to react to five haunting and powerful photos from World War II. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture i'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100 percent honest reaction to it and if you could please hit that like button early i'd really really appreciate it now i love these kinds of videos like world war ii is something that you know as i get older i really really appreciate you know the immense sacrifice of the men that fought in it you know i think i, I watched uh, the fallen of world war ii a few months ago and just seeing the vast number of casualties. I mean, we're talking like 80 plus million people, you know, that's the population of a pretty big country just gone, you know? And obviously relative to that time, the population of the human race was way lower than it is now. So that might have, if you scale it up, we're probably talking like a couple of hundred million people. And uh, the things they went through, you know, fighting in the trenches, you know, just, the shelling, just, oh my God, the, 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 the cold conditions, the, you know, getting sick. I mean, yeah, it was just a horrendous time to be alive, honestly. And this video here, well, it was recommended to me, if, I think um, in the comment section for that video, The Fallen of World War II, and I knew I had to get to it soon just because, you know, just to see what it was like, you know, the reality of, of that war. You know, something that we don't really get to see often. And uh, I just know that it's going to resonate with a lot of people, me included. So let's go. This is going to be me reacting to five haunting and powerful photos from World War II. Let's do it. World War II was the most deadly war in history, causing the deaths of over 60 million people and leaving much of Europe and the world in ruins. It took place during a period when the camera was becoming... Gosh, look at all these buildings wrecked man more commonly used and as such a huge amount of photos and footage exist which capture the horror destruction and suffering that the war caused here are my choices for five of the most haunting and powerful photos from world war ii number five the prisoner of war this photo shows a battered and broken german soldier being taken as a prisoner of war after the battle of stalingrad in 1943 the man seems to have lost all hope, and is no doubt resigned to the bleak fate likely to await him. The expression on his face seems to give some inkling as to the ordeal that he and hundreds of thousands of other soldiers and civilians experienced during the brutal battle. The Battle of Stalingrad was one of history's bloodiest engagements, inflicting a combined total of over 2 million casualties. German forces... And Stalingrad, that's just one city within Russia, isn't it, right? like within the old USSR, imagine one city losing two million people. <sighs> Launched their offensive designed to capture the city of Stalingrad in the summer of 1942. The city was soon reduced to rubble and fighting descended into a series of bloody house-to-house -house engagements as Soviet soldiers made the Germans pay dearly for every inch of ground. The Germans seemed to be slowly but surely pushing the Red Army back However, in November, the Soviets launched a counterattack, which targeted the less experienced and poorer armed Romanian and Hungarian units, which had been protecting the core German army's flanks. The Germans were subsequently cut off and surrounded, and over 200,000 German soldiers were now trapped in the area around Stalingrad. Wow. Rather than attempt to break out and escape, Hitler ordered the men to stand their ground, instead attempting to supply them by air until a rescue force could be arranged. The plan was a disaster, only a maximum of 100 tons of the 700 tons of supplies that the soldiers needed each day could be supplied by air, and much of that was fuel instead of food and ammunition. Oh my god. Unsurprisingly, the result was that the 200,000 Germans trapped at Stalingrad slowly starved to death. Oh. Brutal fighting would continue until February 1943, when with ammunition and food all but exhausted, the remaining 91,000 German soldiers still alive finally surrendered. After everything they had endured, the ordeal was far from over. With over a million Red Army casualties, and at least 40,000 civilians dead or wounded at Stalingrad, the Germans could expect no mercy from their captors. 
Of the 91,000 prisoners taken, only 5,000 would ever return to Germany. Disease, starvation, brutal treatment, and the long march to the prisoner camps inside the Soviet Union would claim the majority of their lives. The fate of the man taken prisoner in this photo is unknown, however it's clear that the odds were stacked against him. Wow. I mean, just absolutely horrible, you know? Just like, just to think of the horrors, you know, the horrors, starving to death, like, you know, just compared to the, the, the life of, you know, relative luxury that a lot of us live in today, just makes me grateful, honestly, that I wasn't alive back then, honestly. Just, ugh. Number four, the haircut. This striking image shows a Royal Air Force pilot getting a haircut while leisurely reading a book and smoking his pipe, all while dressed for battle with his Spitfire ready to take off at a moment's notice in the background. The calmness of the man is surprising and at odds with his situation. The photo was taken in 1942 at a British airfield and presumably the pilot is on active duty and ready to be scrambled to intercept German aircraft. Under such dangerous circumstances, it would be understandable for nerves to be frayed, making relaxation impossible. However, somehow the man is able to put his predicament out of his mind. His serene composure is even more impressive when you consider the details of his plight. Being a fighter pilot during World War II was an extremely risky job. During the Battle of Britain in 1940, 3,000 airmen successfully defended the UK from the threat of a German invasion, but at a staggering cost. Of the original 3,000 aircrew, only around half survived the 112-day battle. Wow. So you basically had a 50-50 chance of coming out alive. Man. Whew. Like, how many of us would willingly subject ourselves to a scenario where you had a 50-50 shot of literally staying alive? Nobody would. Nobody would willingly do that, you know? But that was the reality for these men. With 544 fighter command pilots and crew amongst the dead. In fact, fighter pilot losses were so bad that it was later estimated that the average life expectancy of a fighter pilot during the battle was just four weeks. After the Battle of Britain, the life of an RAF pilot continued to be a dangerous existence. And during the entire course of the Second World War, Nearly 5,000 RAF Command fighter aircraft would be shot down, resulting in 3,690 killed and a further 1,215 wounded. Demands on the crew were extreme, and 15-hour shifts were common, with pilots often flying several missions per day and getting very little sleep. 15-hour shifts. I mean, they must have... Like, in fact, I'm sure they must have taken some kind of, you know extracurricular if you know what i mean just to stay awake like because 15 hours like even with but then again the adrenaline of you know the adrenaline coursing through your veins considering your scenario would be huge so maybe they didn't need anything any kind of substance faced with such odds the chances of this pilot making it through the war might seem slim however despite the danger he did the pilot's name was Francis Mellage, wow. and he would be twice awarded Britain's Distinguished Flying Cross, as well as being recommended for the Victoria Cross. After the war ended, he continued serving in the RAF for a further 30 years, flying until the end of his career, before eventually dying at the age of 72. Wow, I'm so glad to hear that. He made it. <sighs> Number three, the Kamikaze. This image shows 17-year-old kamikaze pilot Corporal Yukio Araki holding a small puppy while four other young pilots look on. The picture was taken the day before the men carried out their suicide mission in Okinawa. The word kamikaze means divine wind and it's associated with a campaign of suicide attacks carried out by Japanese pilots against allied naval forces in the twilight of World War II. The attacks first began in October 1944, in response to several serious defeats suffered by Japan at the hands of the Allies. The Japanese believed that switching tactics to include suicide attacks might prove more effective and even change the course of the war. Aircraft would essentially become piloted missiles wow. as they would be packed with explosives, bombs and fuel. 
the pilot would then try to crash the plane into an enemy ship, which would be more accurate and inflict more damage than conventional weapons. Gosh. According to the US Air Force, an estimated 2,800 kamikaze attacks were carried out, resulting in the sinking of 24 ships, damaging a further 368 vessels. So 2,800 kamikaze attacks, only 24 ships sunk? I mean, I don't know about you, but that, that doesn't really sound like an effective use of personnel, you know? Or, or what do you think? Like, let, let me know in the comments. It just seems like a lot of men to send to their deaths, you know? And killing or wounding as many as 10,000 sailors. It's believed that around 14% of kamikazes got through naval defenses and scored hits on ships, and around 8% of all ships hit would sink. With the tradition of death instead of defeat firmly ingrained in Japanese military culture, there seemed to be no shortage of volunteers for the missions, with one Japanese official later referring to the number of volunteers as like a swarm of bees, and that bees die after they have stung. 3,860 pilots are thought to have died carrying out these missions, with many of the aircraft even carrying more crew than was necessary, as what? eager recruits would squeeze their way on board to encourage the pilot and share in his glory. However, other wow. accounts paint a very different picture, with the chosen pilot seemingly nervous and doubtful, many unable to stand up, and being pushed into their planes by maintenance soldiers. Each man's motives for volunteering was likely to have been unique, and it's certain that shame, peer pressure, and threats forced many to go unwillingly to their deaths. Aircraft were not the only weapons used in kamikaze missions though. Manned torpedoes were also deployed where the volunteer would guide the weapon through the water and into the hull of an enemy ship, and there were also plans for special attack units which included submarines, speedboats, and divers. 17-year-old Yukio Araki became the youngest kamikaze pilot, and it's believed that his plane was one of two that hit the destroyer USS Brain, killing 66 of its crew, but failing to sink the ship, on May 27, 1945. His last letter to his parents read, Please find pleasure in your desire for my loyalty to the Emperor and devotion to parents. I have no regrets. I just go forward on my path. No man. This is powerful stuff, man. Oh, imagine his parents, the emotions reading that. Number two, the statue. This photo shows a statue of six children holding hands and dancing around a crocodile while buildings burn in the background. It was taken on August 23rd, 1942 and shows the devastation wrought by German aerial bombing during the Battle of Stalingrad. The scene of innocence captured by the statue is in stark contrast to the destruction of its surroundings and sums up the terrible damage inflicted by the aerial bombing of cities during World War II. One of the most infamous examples of this was the Blitz, which was a campaign of intensive bombing carried out by the German Luftwaffe against industrial and civilian targets all over Britain between September the 7th, 1940 and May the 21st, 1941. Over the course of 267 days, London was bombed 71 times, destroying or damaging over 1 million houses and killing as many as 30,000 civilians in London alone. At that time, London contained 9 million people, which was one-fifth of Britain's population, and due to its sheer size, it was difficult to defend and proved a ripe target for German bombers in their attempt to break British morale to continue fighting the war, as well as damage the war economy. The strategy seemed to fail, however, as morale survived and war industries continued to grow in size. German cities would not escape the war unscathed, however, and many historic towns and cities across the Third Reich would be reduced to ruins by Allied bombing. During the last week of July 1943, Allied air forces bombed Hamburg, killing over 42,000 civilians and wounding a further 37,000, leaving the city a ruined husk. Saturation bombing became a key part of the Allied war strategy, which essentially meant that the entire enemy city would be targeted instead of just industrial or military zones, in the belief that enemy morale could be broken and the economy destroyed, forcing an early surrender. Even though atomic weapons had yet to be deployed, cities could still be wiped out through the use of incendiary bombs, which would cause intense fires and could burn a city to ashes. Tokyo was particularly hit hard by this strategy, due to its high concentration of wooden buildings, and over 100,000 are thought to have been killed. High, you know, high concentration of wooden buildings, you know, 
flammable. As soon as they catch fire, you know, it's just another thing to deal with. Honestly, just this, this video, it just makes me think, you know, what is the point of war, honestly? What is the point of it, you know? You just, you go to a, you know, another place, you destroy as much of that place as possible. It's just such a, um, it's just so barbaric, honestly. I just wish that, you know, this is wishful thinking, but, you know, a world without war, you know, without the need for it, it's just, like disputes can surely be dealt with in a better way, can't they? Or maybe I'm being naive, I don't know. Killed with over a million injured during allied bombings of the city. Dresden is another infamous example of the potent destruction bombing raids could cause. Before the war it was known as the Florence of the Elbe because of its beautiful architecture. However, wartime bombing raids would kill as many as 135,000 and destroy all of its renowned buildings. In fact, it's estimated that around 85% of houses in central Dresden would be destroyed in the air raids. Europe and the world had seemed to have been engulfed in a hellish apocalypse, and the photo of the statue seems to perfectly encapsulate the clash between the serenity of normal city life and the deadly reality of the aftermath of the war. The statue went on to be restored after the war ended, before finally being removed in the 1950s. A replica would be installed at the original site on the 23rd of August 2013, to commemorate the 71st anniversary of the Battle of Stalingrad. However, in December that same year, the statue would once again witness destruction during the terrorist bombings which hit Volgograd Railway Station. Wow. Number 1. The Execution this photo shows six ethnic German men facing a Polish firing squad in the opening days of World War II, each man seemingly showing a different emotion on his face. Despair, defiance, fear and acceptance are all on display as each man faces the end in his own way, and the man third from left even appears to be smiling. The picture was taken during a series of killings of German minorities in Poland as a result of the German invasion, which has since become known as Bloody Sunday. On September 3, 1939, two days after the German attack on Poland, several Germans who were believed to be saboteurs were rounded up and executed in a series of killings that has remained highly controversial regarding everything from the numbers of people killed through to the justification for the killings. Whether or not the men were in fact saboteurs, the Nazis exploited the killings for propaganda purposes, and the invading German army would later massacre Polish civilians in the town where Bloody Sunday happened as revenge. Such atrocities against civilian populations and enemy soldiers were the hallmark of World War II, and similarly haunting photos of men and women facing firing squads exist all over the internet. In this infamous photo, a captured Soviet spy laughs in the face of his Finnish executioner wow. moments before being shot. Imagine that, you're facing the end, the end. And you, you know, you, you can you, you can find enough humour in the situation to laugh, you know, laugh in the face of execution. The mindset of that individual, honestly, fascinating. I can imagine the majority of people would be desperately begging, you know, please don't do this. Wow. The man was caught operating in Finland and paid the ultimate price for his service to Soviet Russia, choosing to remain defiant until the end. In this image taken in 1944, a member of the French resistance smiles while facing a German firing squad. This was a mock execution designed to terrify the man into divulging information, however the tactic obviously failed, wow. and he refused to talk and would later die in a German concentration camp. Oh. Executions and harsh treatment of local populations became a major part of German strategy, where the belief was that the best way to crush resistance movements inside occupied countries was to be utterly ruthless and brutal in putting them down. Villages which sheltered partisans would be wiped out, and often several locals would be executed for every German killed by partisan forces. Such operations often descended into nothing more than the massacre of civilians, and this kind of brutality was most infamously on display at the Eastern Front, where it's thought that over two-thirds of all casualties were civilians. So those are my choices for five haunting and powerful photos from World War II, but what do you think? Let me know what you thought was the most haunting of the photos wow. in the comments. Man, that was a phenomenal video. Just 
very, very haunting. A lot of food for thought. I mean, just the absolute savagery on display, the brutality, the lack of mercy, just, oh, wow. I mean, to be alive back then, just, oh, definitely one of the dark chapters of human history for sure. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and keep throwing the recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing the recommendations, and I'll catch you in the next one.